From newsounds.org and the studios of WNYC, welcome to the Soundcheck Podcast, our series of live in-studio performances, streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm John Schaefer. Daughter of Swords is the name chosen by the singer and guitarist Alexandra sauser Monig. For her solo project, you may know Alexandra as one-third of the alternative folk band Mountain Man, who were here last year. Alexandra has just released her first album under the name Daughter of Swords. It's called Dawnbreaker, and it brings her back to our WNYC studio and this edition of the Soundcheck podcast to play some of those songs for us. This first one is called Longleaf Pine. In the long leaf pine, blackberry and muscadine, oak and leaf and walnut pride. Snake, rabbit, and chickadee. I see as they fall and they see me. Carelessly, I leave them be. As I make my way, as I make my way, make my That is Daughter of Swords with Long Leaf Pine. Daughter of Swords is the work of Alexandra sauser Great to have you back here in our studio, solo this time. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back. Uh, as with the songs that you wrote for the last Mountain Man record, there is a very kind of timeless, old, really deep folk sound mm-hmm. to that song. Um, did that come naturally to you? I mean... Did you grow up with that music in the house? Um, I mean, not really. My dad really liked pop country radio, um, so we would listen to that together. Um, And, you know, a lot of, like, classic rock and the Beatles. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I do remember hearing, like, banjo music, I think, on the theme song of um, Car Talk. (laughs) <laughs> yes, and being like that sound being like what is that it's so amazing it like speaks to my heart well you know those guys the the click and clack the tappet brothers yeah. they were serious talented musicians i didn't know oh, that Oh yes they were you know we had them playing actually playing live in our studio many many years wow. ago actually it was the year they won the peabody award which is the yeah big broadcasting mm-hmm. award so yes in addition to being comic and presumably knowledgeable about cars they were also <laughs> like yeah they were also like really you know one of them played guitar and the other played the stand-up bass that's incredible i had no idea yeah yeah big uh 
big music fans and of course you know hugely popular among public radio listeners yeah so, uh yeah so um so you grew up in St. Paul, but you live in North Carolina, where, of course, the sound is mm -hmm. kind of in the air, it's I It's everywhere. Suppose. Yeah, it is. Um, your voice, there are always moments where I think, okay, that's it. She's gone as high as she can go. And then you go higher. <laughs> <laughs> when did you know you had that, that, that kind of high end there? Um, I think that uh, singing in Mountain Man... I really, I, we we don't always sing the same in the same vocal ranges from song to song, but I tend to sing the higher parts, yeah. and I think um, that was sort of a, a a time of discovery of what I could do with my voice. Um, and then, I, honestly, like I, I I mean I'm constantly still learning about my voice, but I write songs really like singing really quietly. And then when it comes time to perform them for other people and I have to project more, I'm like, man, I wrote a song that's almost impossible to <laughs> sing. Um, but like that's where the song went. So yeah. I just figure out how to, <laughs> how okay. to hit the notes. Well, now, uh, Mountain Man started as a kind of a college thing. You mm -hmm. and uh, Amelia Meath mm -hmm. from Sylvanesso, and Molly, Molly Sarle, Sarle, yeah. Sarle, who yeah. has her own uh, solo record coming mm -hmm. out. And then there was this long period of hiatus before the three of you got back together and mm -hmm. released uh, Magic... Magic Ship. Ship. The, I was going to say Magic Cat, but Magic Ship <laughs> is the cat's name. Yeah. Uh, uh, that was last year. So in the intervening years, <laughs> you did other things other than music, right? I did, yeah. Like what? I, um, I farmed. I worked on a handful of different um, organic flower and vegetable farms, um, and I have a friend who has a, a blanket weaving business, and I learned how to weave from her and moved up to the Ap Appalachian Mountains in North Carolina and wove blankets. Wow. Which is really cool and special. Um, and, I, yeah. I just have to ask, do you find weaving to be a kind of, is there any a analogy to music to be made in mm. the act of weaving? I don't, I mean, there are, like the patterns kind of look similar like the patterns of uh of weaving kind of look like shape note yeah singing i've often thought that yeah um i mean there's definitely rhythm involved and um and yeah i mean i think i think i hadn't thought about it before but i think there are i think there are parallel threads there yeah so while you were doing all this were you still singing i was still singing um mostly by myself yeah. i was still writing songs um and uh doing it it, it felt like a secret joy mm. um and and yeah i i continued singing and just sort of circled back around like none of the things that i did f made me feel as fully myself as as singing does yeah. um and so as i kept trying new things and realizing like this is really amazing and I'm so glad to have learned how to do this thing it still doesn't feel right um so yeah well and then Mountain Man got back together and I guess at that point you had begun this journey to mm -hmm. become daughter of swords mm -hmm. and, and make the record so ha did you have to put this aside for a while um it was it was all happening concurrently and I think that I really thrive on having maybe slightly too much happening um, <laughs> and trying to squeeze it all in. So I was um, recording my solo record as Mountain Man was recording Magic Ship. Mm. And you made the record with Nick Sanborn, who I was did. the other half of Sylvanesso. That's right. So a lot of these songs, a few of them sound like just you and the guitar, mm -hmm. as, as you're doing today, but a lot of the songs have this kind of bigger still lo-fi but mm -hmm. this kind of bigger sound world to them yeah was that intended when you yeah set it, w out? it was intended because I really felt like um at the outset of recording like I'd written songs that that could be really cool and interesting by um having other instrumentation and um and I'd never done that with my songs before you know Mountain Man is all acoustic guitar and voices also so I just felt really excited and curious about pushing the boundaries of yeah. my musical world while still maintaining the kind of core quietness of it. 
Well, and the song you're going to do next is one of those fields of gold. It but, is. but now you have to like knock it back down yeah. to <laughs> to something that I uh, imagine is what it sounded like when you first wrote it. Yeah. Um, so this is from the album, which is called Dawnbreaker, and um, we're speaking with uh, Alexandra Sousermonic. She is daughter of swords, playing tonight uh, in Brooklyn at Union Pool. Mm-hmm. And then speaking of Sylvanesso, you'll be. Um, part of the band when they come to the Beacon Theater in I November. I will. I'm so excited. November 17th and 18th. That's and, right. And Daughter of Swords will be the opening act, right? That's right, for both of those shows. All right. Well, right now uh, you're here, so let's. Uh, you want to do this solo version of Fields of Gold? I do. All right. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Trucker's got a cigarette of age in a dot of white line trains out in the wilderness of I 40 West, just a big gulp in the leather vest, and when it's rubber to the Once again, Daughter of Swords, live here in uh, the WNYC, the New Sound Studio, on this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast. Uh, Daughter of Swords with Fields of Gold, very different version, Alex, from what's on the record, which is one of the more kind of pop-inflected tunes. Indeed. Um, Now, the, the album, though, it's almost like a statement of intent. The very first sounds you hear on Dawnbreaker are of a a train off in the distance. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like it was recorded maybe in your house with the windows open. Exactly. It was recorded in my bedroom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so 
you know, it's it's this kind of determinedly homespun kind of quality to mm -hmm. it, which is really nice. But I'm just wondering if there's anything else be behind that that sound of the train going mm. off in the distance. Was that just a happy accident, or were you waiting for that sound? I was kind of waiting for that sound. I love that sound. It's so haunting and um, beautiful and, like, lonely um, in, in a way that feels, like, really appropriate in the context of a record about um, moving through the end of a relationship into the next phase of life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... But it, it doesn't feel like a breakup record. No. Quote unquote. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, that was really uh I I hate I hate a gloomy song. <laughs> um and I mean, you know, I love them, but I also like I don't like to uh just wallow in my feelings. Uh -huh. And um so I yeah, I was think I thought a lot about how to make a record, how to write songs that felt like they had integrity and reflected um, how I was approaching where I was emotionally without, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing a deep dive. Well, but, but also the idea of, you know, moving through something and you have this train that is clearly moving through the mm -hmm. landscape mm -hmm. off in the distance. I mean, to me, it seemed like maybe there was some intent there, that mm -hmm. it was a suggestion of some kind of journey mm -hmm. that you were going to be taken on. Um, the name Daughter of Swords. Mm -hmm sounds like it might come from the tarot is that it's true it does it does yeah what deck the mother piece deck are you familiar with that no. deck? it's so beautiful it's round all the cards are round um, really and they're the illustrations are just really lovely um yeah a and it's called the m the mother mother piece mother piece mm -hmm. uh so our i mean for folks who, who you know, yeah. it, it, the tarot, you know, has one, two, three, four, five, but it also has a king and a queen and a knight and a mm -hmm. page. Mm -hmm. Where does the daughter fit in? Mm. The daughter, you're asking a hard question. I dabble in tarot, but I don't feel like okay. I know enough to answer but that. But does your deck have all of those? It have, yeah. It has n knaves and, or pages? Well, and it has, there are different, um, there's like son and daughter and then... Um, what are the names of them? Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I've looked at it. But <laughs> but what? so what does that card yeah. mean? That card is um, a, a card, like, you know, the orientation in which you pull a card affects how you read the the information about it. So whether it comes out whether upside down. Upside down or, or yeah. sideways or whatever. <clears throat> um, and it came, this card came out like straight um, up, pointing up. Mm -hmm. And um, that card is about, uh, like, letting go of things that have held you back and letting go of fear and, um, and like, m moving forward fearlessly. Yeah. And uh, it just r really resonated with me when I was uh, looking at it. And I, as I was looking at it, I was like, I think that's a really cool band name. It is a cool band <laughs> name. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and seems to fit kind of the the mm -hmm. tenor of the of the yeah. album of the songs, um, which, despite being about you know with the end of one thing and the beginning of another, mm -hmm. is full of natural imagery. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've heard it in both of the songs that you've played already. Mm -hmm. So, that's clearly a, a source of inspiration. And you know, as someone who has farmed, it mm -hmm. seems like completely organic mm -hmm. no pun intended mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i will retrospectively <laughs> intend the pun since you're laughing at it um but uh so so where do people fit in mm. in this natural world mm, where do they fit in um I don't know. I feel I'm a real loner. So they fit in in, in the uh where do they fit? <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, in the context of the record, they there's like really specific people and types of relationships that the record is about. Um, but I think I gravitate towards I write songs about n n like the natural world and plants and being outside because that's where I feel like most myself and most at home. Um, 
Yeah, and people are people are occasionally a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, b- bicycling is an image that mm-hmm. crops up a surprising amount of times, at least twice. I mean, there's mm-hmm. the the Shining Woman video, mm-hmm. and then uh, it's in uh, the the first song you Long Leaf Pine. Long Leaf yeah. Pine. So is that also something that is that how you kind of get through life and nature, et cetera? Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> I love it so much. Um, yeah, Shining Woman was really a, a kind of like a, a daydream, like the f- first line of the song popped into my head about this, this the image of this woman who's um, on a bike journey. And uh, yeah, I just, I just am constantly inspired by people who are um, using bikes to get around and also people who just leave home and go on like yeah. long extended bike trips. Did you, do yeah. you know Ben Soli, the, the cellist from Kentucky, singer, songwriter, and cellist? I don't, no. Yeah, yeah. He, f- for some years, that was how he toured. Really? With his cello slung over his back on a bike. Oh, my God. <laughs> I Not a whole lot of carbon footprint there. No, that's amazing. Yeah. I like to daydream about that, but it seems really hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that that Northampton, Massachusetts to New York leg of the journey, that's uh, a short one. Yeah. And even that on a bike would yeah. be days, I would think. Um, so, uh, but, you know, sort of coming back to this idea of where do people fit in, mm-hmm. uh, th- the song you're going to do next for us is explicitly about at least one person. It's called mm-hmm. Human. Yeah. So where is this, I mean, do you see this album as a narrative arc? And if so, where is this song in that arc? The song, the song is um, is is almost the last part of the arc, and it's um, it's a song about um, just r- recognizing when it's time to let go of something that's not helping you be the best version of yourself, and and that um, there's like a lot of joy and liberation and positivity that can come out of uh you know ending Mm. ending a relationship and um so yeah it's towards the end of the arc right yeah all right let's uh let's once again hear a live performance daughter of swords the album is called dawnbreaker she's playing tonight at union pool in brooklyn and playing for us today on this edition of the soundcheck podcast Today I woke up early I saw you sleeping there I rose and tiptoed softly up To see day dawn through cold air the grass and leaves we see in wait to soon melt away. I really wanted somebody to hold me and to say. Can't will 
The song is called Human from Daughter of Swords, the work of Alexandra sauser Monig. So even when talking about a human being, you still end up in the natural world with the, the image of the bird in flight at the end of the song. I can't help it. <laughs> so um, singing solo like this mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily seem to be your thing, even though you're doing a lot of it right now. It seems like when you have you know, when you have the choice, you like to surround your voice with mm-hmm. other voices, even mm-hmm. if it's just layers of your own. Um, is that? I, I honestly really like both. Yeah. Um, I mean, harmony feels like one of the reasons I'm on planet Earth. It, it's one of my favorite things and makes me feel um, like I'm fulfilling a, a, a duty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also, um, there's like a unique challenge to singing by yourself and... Um, you know, it requires a lot of bravery, but also like there's just a lot of space to like fine tune mm. how you use your your vocal instrument, and yeah. and it it just requires it's like a totally different way of thinking about it. Well, I like the fact that you know there are lots of songs on the record where even when you haven't surrounded yourself with your bandmates and your mm-hmm. friends, you're still surrounding yourself with other tracks of yourself. It's you know? true. Uh, yeah. the, the harmonies are just they're they're. Just beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, so the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, so m- is is Molly gonna, gonna, going to be part of Sylvan Esso for this fall? She tour is. Well? Yeah. So basically, Mountain Man has been subsumed yes. into Sylvan Esso for Mo- the fall. Yeah. <laughs> Molly and I will be backup singers for Sylvan Esso. Very nice. So, so it really is kind of like a musical family that you guys mm-hmm. have set up there in North Carolina. It is. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing a little bit of it back to our New York studio today. Thanks for Alex, having great, me. Alex, great to see you again. Great to see you, too. The album is called Dawnbreaker from Daughter of Swords. And uh, once again, she'll be performing tonight at Union Pool in Brooklyn. Um, Alex and company will be back at the Beacon Theater November 17th and 18th with the band Sylvan Esso. Daughter of Swords will be the opening act both nights. And that'll do it for this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast. <laughs>